my motto is to just think less, do more. So good. Jump, you're ready now. Jump, the sky's the limit. Jump, jump, jump. Leave it all behind and jump. Just go for it. Jump, if you can dream it. Jump, jump, jump. Together we can do all things. Hi guys, I can't believe is March. Do you guys can believe how things are going so fast? It's kind of crazy. So today in the podcast, I have my friend, the boss lady. If you are a creator and you do want to earn money to get to the point that you want to um, have enough to be able to pursue your dreams, you got to listen to this interview with Jerry. It's amazing. She's going to talk about think less and do more. Let's get going. Jerry Bernard, I'm so happy you are here. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to Jeff, my friend. So I, <laughs> I'm so excited to bring you to everyone that is listening because you are just so brilliant in your mind and your heart and you are an artist, but you are also an entrepreneur. And I know that you have so much to give. So like, take us back in your life, take us back to the point of when you were dreaming, when you're dreaming, you like to paint. How did you got to starting off what was your dreams and how did you get to where you are today as an entrepreneur a successful one so tell us <laughs> um yeah i'm so happy to chat with you um so my dreams i was always a dreamer um my mom if you were interviewing her could probably tell you that i was that kid that could be in my room just sort of imagining something with my stuffed animals. You know, I didn't need a bunch of people to play with um, for me to be imaginative. So um, even as a little girl, I was just so drawn to the arts, like anything art. So mm -hmm. singing, dancing, doodling, um, acting. I was just so drawn to what creativity brings out of you. Um, And I always wanted to express that with everyone in school or extracurriculars. Like I was just, even with my friends, I was always that person that was really pushing people to be creative. So it's just, it's almost, it's, it's like in my blood. Um, so yeah, I think that, um, you know, that was sort of the, the catalyst for me moving into opening up my own art studio. Um, I was always drawn to being creative and I also think that it's healing. So mm -hmm. for me, it was also about what creativity can do for your soul and your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so writing and music, uh, so it was, it's really just the, the whole spectrum. Um, and I was, I feel so blessed that I was given that opportunity growing up to be able to express that through, um, you know, through art, through, through dancing, through doodling. I mean, right. I, I had those outlets. Right. Um, did your yeah. mom, did your mom support you? Did she encourage you to do more of those things? Yeah. I would say both of my parents and my whole family did. Um, and I don't even know if they, if they tried to suppress it, it probably wouldn't have worked anyway with my personality uh, as a little girl. Uh, <laughs> I would have just been like, I'm doing it anyway. Right. Um, yeah, it was just, it was something I was born to do. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. So do you, do you dream and thought about like, I think I'm going to be an artist or I'm going to be a teacher. Did you dream about those things? Um, You know, if we're going back way to when I was a little girl, I probably wanted to be a movie star. <laughs> still time. There's still time. No, no. And then I think, uh, then I think it got more streamlined as I went along. Being a teacher uh, is also something that, um, you know, you bring that up. My mom was a teacher. My uh, grandmother was a teacher. Uh, my cousins, my aunts, it's, it's really a part of my family dynamic. So, um, and being a student, I've always loved, because I, I feel like the best teachers are students. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So for me, I was just always an avid learner and like, why do people do what they do? And I think mm. art is such a great way to figure that out. So um, my parents just really encouraged me to just be whoever I wanted to be. That's a gift. That's a true yeah. gift, you know? And then to figuring out that not just being an artist, but that you had to learn about business and earn money. That is <laughs> that is a journey itself, right? It totally is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is a journey. Um, especially being an artist, a lot of people would say we're flighty or just sort of random in what we do, spontaneous, that we're not organized. And I was, I was this odd combination of both, um, a type A and a type B combined, uh, an AB. Wow. Um, <laughs> so I both can be, can get messy and totally just randomly want to do something and see where it goes. And then also want to be really organized and make sure that I'm staying on task. Which is really the key for success, right? Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I think preparation is always the way to go. That's so good. It is so good. So how how did it came about, like, for you to own your own business? You know, that is actually something that was always a dream of mine. I knew at a young age, I always wanted to be my own boss one day. I wanted to be... uh, in charge of whatever I was doing. And I knew that the way to do that was to work for other people first because I needed that life experience. Right. Um, And I get sort of the stars aligned, you know, when the artist entertainment industry was just starting out, I was a part of that. Mm. And when I was looking for my next phase of life, it, um, it was something that a friend of mine at the time it suggested, and I was so young and then I realized, is this the moment? Is, wow. is this the moment I'm going to do it? So, because um, you had a, you had it to break the mold. Because at that time, most of the people that opened the the paint and seep business, they were more older, older yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, they were retirees who were sort of using retirement funding to to open up a fun business and do something that was really fun and profitable. Um, I was just, you know, in my mid twenties trying to figure out what I was doing with my life. Um, you know, personally and professionally. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So So you, you had to, you had to basically be the pioneer and break that mold and basically tell to the entire system that it's possible. It's okay. If you are younger that you can still be a boss. Yeah, you know, and um, I look back and I realized I had a ton of confidence, but also I ran into a ton of discrimination against being young and being a woman. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, oh, you're doing this? Oh, I could do this. You know, there's a lot of that, uh, judgment, which, mm-hmm. you know, for me usually propels me to do more, be better, push past it. But, but of course, at the same time, it, it makes you sad because, yeah. you know, somebody's judging your success level based on your gender or your age, yeah, um, not, not what you're capable of. Yeah. And now the time has passed. You silence those creepy voices. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I think those voices live within all of us. And I think it is always a challenge. You know, I think that's sort of the, the nature of healing and the process of learning more about yourself is you it goes through waves. You know, I, I believe that healing comes in waves. And so some of those voices from the beginning, I don't hear anymore, but there's, yes. there's definitely new ones that I have right. to work through. And um, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And how it is to be a boss of artists in carrier of that. It's, you know, it's both, re- it's, it's definitely rewarding. Um, it's both exciting because I feel like I get them. Mm. You know, and I think that's part of what made me really feel like this could be a good fit for me is because I know, you know, what it's like to be underpaid and undervalued yeah. as an wow. artist. 
Um, so I knew that I wanted, you know, what I was compensating my artists for and their talents and mm -hmm. all of the responsibilities I was giving them to, to feel of value because they are a value. And also it's, it is a challenge because artists are, they've tapped into that part of themselves where they're able to express themselves creatively and feel more um, confident about what they're doing. And sometimes that can cause, you know, uh, more opinions to come out than, mm -hmm. than in you know, a typical nine to five boss employee situation. Right. You know? Yeah. How many artists do you have right now in your team? Ooh, um, it fluctuates um, because some people move away. I think right now we're at, we're at 10. Wow. It fluctuates some, somewhere, but we yeah. fluctuate between like nine and 12. And I think right now we're at 10. Um, yeah. And, and I've had a solid team for That's a while. That's amazing. That's really yeah. cool. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> it's just <laughs> taking, taking it to a different side of, your heart let's put it this way we're talking about entrepreneurship and you know your efficiency and getting business done yeah but in your personal life what is the bravest thing you ever did like what was the one thing that you felt like oh my gosh like i i'm gonna do this jump yeah um so Definitely. I mean, it's, it's an overlap, the personal and professional. It really was taking the leap to open this business was incredibly, uh. it was incredibly brave for me to do that, not realizing it. But at the same time in my personal life, um, there's addiction in my family mm. and I have always been the glue. So the bravest thing I've ever done is always look at what's coming up in my family dynamic and choosing to face it mm. instead of move away from it. And not everybody does that. Mm -hmm. You're so right. It's, it's chasing it. It's chasing it before it chases you, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Choosing to look at what's coming up, what people like to deny within themselves. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's so that, brave. That's something that I've chosen to face mm -hmm. um, and, and use my own abilities of tapping into my own uh, intuition and empathy to be able to be of service in my family to help, um, to help work through those really difficult things that a lot of people don't talk about. I was yeah. always that person that was like, we need to talk more. And now we're in, you know, a time, which is really cool. I feel like we're not like these podcasts. We're in a time where people yeah. are talking more about mental health and we're talking mm -hmm. more about addiction. We're talking more about how these incredible stresses that we all go through, of course, we're all struggling in some way, but we all try to uh -huh. fake it a lot. There's a lot yeah. of, this, you know, filter Instagram, you know, and I right. think for me, I was always looking for the deeper connections and and the bravest thing I've ever done is constantly be vulnerable in facing those things that came up in my family um wow that is so amazing because shallow everybody gets tired of shallow people <laughs> it's, it's so true we want to know we want to know that we can connect in different levels we can as we can be totally different coming from different backgrounds but we struggle we all yeah. do. Yeah. I always say I hate small talk. I prefer big talk. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. Good. Yeah. So, so that is so good. We, in, that, in that line of thought process, I know that you are a writer. Yes. And I bring a lot of writers into the podcast because I feel so connected to the yeah. writers because I feel like you have a message to share. You know, so yeah. in your writer career, where are you now? Are you writing a blog? Are you working in the, yeah, share, share a little bit about that area. <laughs> I know, I know yeah. that was not revealed, but I want to, I want to bring it that. It wasn't Rebecca, but, <laughs> but I am happy to talk about it. I really am. And I'm, I'm so happy you're challenging me to talk about this area because, um, 
as I was talking about art just being part of my blood, writing was therapy for me growing up, especially, you know, some of the things that I faced that I went through, um, you know, behind closed doors, writing was my way of processing. It really was therapy. And I think, I think that's what it is for most artists, you know, for most people, if that's what a diary is, you know, um, and I would get away from writing sometimes. Mm. And so, um, since I have become more established with my art studio and I have a wonderful studio manager, who's also an artist, um, I've been able to explore a little bit more my own, um, dreams that, you know, my other dreams. And Mm -hmm. so, um, with writing, I have, um, definitely begun the process of being more vulnerable, um, on my Instagram, just to start, just to, just to be able to share with people my own personal development journey and wanting to learn more about myself, why I do what I do, help other people feel less alone. That's a huge thing for me. Um, And I also challenged myself to contribute to other people. So um, I actually recently um, signed up to be a contributor for a platform that I really believe in called Babes Who Hustle, which started in Jacksonville. Um, And it was started by a lovely woman who also um, started her dreams in her 20s. And so obviously I resonate with that. And it's all about women who are hustling. Um, it's, it really, it allows you to step past your perfectionism, which I think is, is the thing that I'm working through right now. Um, being someone who, you know, was raised in a family where, you know, success was something that I was always trying to achieve, but you can eventually get to the point where you overanalyze everything yeah. and you're so critical. Yeah. <laughs> so with writing, I've tried to just step out of my comfort zone mm. and be vulnerable and just do it. So yeah. my motto is to just think less, do more. So good. It's better done to be, it's better to have it done than perfect, right? It's better to be done and have something than to hoarder all those projects for, many years and never release them. Yes. And it's easier said than done. Um, so (laughs) speaking of that, um, there is something that I've been working on now for, I want to say it's a year and a half, maybe a couple years. It's been in the works. Um, I've done so much personal development work. I am such a psychology junkie. People in my life probably get so sick of it because I just, I love it. I have stacks and stacks of psychology psychology books. I'm constantly signing up for programs to learn more. Um, and with that, I have, you know, some, some knowledge on, uh, and experience on those programs. And I want to be a resource to other people, a safe space. So I've created a blog called, uh, it's a blog. It'll be a resource. It'll have interviews, hopefully eventually a podcast. Yes, um, yes, 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 yeah, yes. So it'll, it'll be a collaborative experience. Um, it'll, it's called the glowing self. Um, I love the name. I, I love the name. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited for the cover of that because it's so, going to be awesome. It's wow. called The Going Self. I have an Instagram. Um, the website's under construction, but um, it is absolutely in the process of uh, coming out and being something that's collaborative. And, and my goal is to also create a community where we are able to create a safe space people. Um, I know that growing up, I had a mixture of both safety and then some things that weren't so safe. Mm -hmm. And I have wanted to break that cycle and be an example of you can go through hard things and still be going through hard things, but you, you need to do it with other people and you need to know that you're not alone. Um, so, so that would be the goal and a resource of just, you know, wonderful information that helps you be a better person. I love this so very much. (laughs) I really do. That's exactly what I wanted you to share. I wanted people to know that they can go and find you and connect with you in that level. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my Instagram, um, my personal Instagram, authentically.gdb. Um, and it has, you know, links to the glowing self, um, which will be that platform that I'll be creating. And, um, 
you know, what, what it isn't though, because some people have asked me like, what is the going self? Right. For me, it is definitely trying to be your best self, but in order to get there, you have to do the hard stuff. Yes. You have to look at the darker stuff. Right. Um, you wow. have to be willing to be vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's I'm excited. This is right in my <laughs> this is right in my alley. Like I really love that because you have to tell the truth to find the answers. Otherwise, you you never dig in enough, you know, for that for the tree to be able to grow and have deep roots. You need to dig in and let's clean the soil, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's amazing. So Jerry, I ask every, <laughs> I ask every single person that comes to this podcast, if they have a quote that is speaking to them and why, do you have one to share with us? I do. And in typical Jerry fashion, I have more than one. <laughs> it's so normal. Let normal. me put a statement here. It's normal. <laughs> disclaimer it's normal so i have more than one um but i'll just give you two that really are staples for me um that i try to remind myself of so trusting the process is one so trust the process so that is one that seems really simple and it is but it can be so hard especially it's easy to trust the process when things are going great <laughs> but when things are really difficult it is hard to remember that there is a reason for things happening yeah. and to be able to let go and surrender versus resist what's happening. Yeah. So, um, so that's one. And then the staple quote that is just always there for me is this too shall pass. That's the, so reason, good. the reason why it's such a staple quote is it's, it's not, some people think it might be negative. It's both because happiness is a state of mind. It's not who you are. People are always striving. Oh, if I have this amount of money, I'll be happy. If I get this job, I'll be happy. If I get this relationship, I'll be happy. And you're constantly seeking, seeking, seeking versus being okay with right now and being present. And this too shall pass. I feel like really just reminds you that it'll pass. You have to be present or it's going to pass. So this moment that's wonderful yeah. is going to pass. And yeah. also when it's bad, it's going to pass. Nothing, oh, nothing so is permanent, good. you know? I needed to hear that today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was so generous of you to say that because we think we're going to be stuck in the same place. And, right. and it's like, oh, it's not changing, but it will pass. Yeah, nothing's permanent. And, you know, whatever you believe, you're going to be pushed into the next phase of your life. Uh, and and I, I believe that, uh, you know, you will see things that are going to, you know, show you where your next step is, where you have to go. You're going to be pushed out of it whether you like it or not so you might as well just sort of surrender to it mm, so good surrender to it you know what you're amazing <laughs> I am so glad that you came here and shared a little bit of you to us so happy about that you're so beautiful. I can, I get to see you. You really are. You are a celebrity star. And oh my gosh, movie star status. I got it. <laughs> That's right. You already are. You really are. You're so beautiful, but you have so much insight inside of your heart to share. And I'm excited for your future. I'm, ex I'm excited to celebrate every stone, every step that I'll see you reaching the star that you will continue being this huge successful entrepreneur and a pioneer in so many things. So thank, thank you. you. Oh, I needed that. I needed that. <laughs> I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here. We're excited. So thank you. Draw, you're ready now.